Android is one of the best platforms for lost spec gaming. It's also one of the best platforms for emulation as everything from the NES to PlayStation 1 and even the GameCube can be played on our smartphones. Hi guys, it's Mr. Kanu Play and in today's video, the Ethers X2 emulator from system requirements to its setup and even tips on how to get the best performance. Now the biggest challenge on Android has always been the PlayStation 2 emulation which has been done before by the likes of Daemon PS2 emulator which in my opinion has absolutely failed at this task. But we finally have a high quality PlayStation 2 emulator that landed on Android in late 2021, the Ether SX2. Now with the few games that I have played, I can confidently assure you that this is the best PlayStation 2 emulator. So what should you know about it? Well in this video I'll be your guide, so let's start with a brief history on this emulator. Now the Ether SX2 was developed by a guy by the name Talrat, who used the PC SX2 which is a long running well established emulator on the PC, so it makes sense to take advantage of its coding. Now the Ether SX2 was initially released in December 2021 by the Google Play Store as open beta, but you can also get the application by their website. Unfortunately, Talred stopped working on the app so no more updates. So what are its system requirements? Well, for the CPU you need a phone with a Snapdragon 845 level processor or beta. Specifically, you need 4 large CPU cores like the Cortex A75 or higher, with a 64-bit processor and a 64-bit version of Android. For the GPU, you need Adreno graphics which offer the best performance than Mali or PowerVR GPUs that are found in like older Samsung Exynos processors. But no need to worry about this my Android friends, if you have Mali then use Vulkan graphics option as it's generally faster than OpenGL but not in all games. Now this doesn't mean that our mid-range phones like my Infinix Hot 40i can perform well. As noted before, performance varies from game to game which means that 3D titles might not work well due to the advanced graphics but 2D titles might just be fine. Now the main problem is the 64-bit processor which rules out all phones that are 10 years or older. So even though Ether SX2 has some recommended requirements, performance has actually varied widely depending on the game you're playing. So how do you set it up? Well the setup seems quite complicated but it has just 3 simple steps. Number 1, download the app which can be from the site or the Play Store. Number 2, get the PlayStation 2 BIOS, which is the firmware that originally came with the console. So please download this on your PC and finally, you need to download PlayStation 2 games in ROM or ISO format. Now the setup wizard allows you to set different compatibility profiles like optimal slash safe if you have a mid to high end device or fast slash unsafe if you have a low end device and want a speed boost and high FPS at the expense of stability. Now on aspect ratio, I prefer the widescreen option. Stretch also works fine, but you can choose out of standard, which is how the games were original. Now download your bus via the PC and use WinRAR or 7-zip to extract. After this, we connect our phones to our PCs and create a folder, let's call it PlayStation 2 BIOS. Then move what we extracted into it. Now once done, we go back to our phones, hit import BIOS, then go to my files, internal storage and locate the PlayStation 2 BIOS folder. Now in here you'll find 3 BIOS options to choose from, number 1 being BIOS 3004R which is for Europe, number 2 SCPH 10000 for Japan and finally SCPH 39001 for US BIOS. Now you can import all of them or you can simply choose one of them. Now the final step is to locate your ROMs and mine it in a folder called the PlayStation 2 games and I click use this folder to access all my games. And you are done. Now personally I prefer the touch screens but you can use gamepads especially for fast titles like platformers or racing games. Now let's do a quick controller setup. To do this, go to the three lines on the top left, then controller settings. Now for those of us using touch screens like how I prefer it, go to touch screen menu, then touch screen controller view and change this to dual analog pad to get two analog sticks. If you're using a controller, then change it to none to remove all on-screen buttons or you can simply scroll down to hide with external controller options and turn it on. Now this hides on-screen buttons anytime you touch a controller. Now the best thing about this application is that it auto detects the kind of gamepad you have. So go to port 1, click automatic mapping and click on your gamepad to automatically map your buttons. Now if you're not happy with the mapping, then scroll down to binding and change any of the buttons that you wish to. Just click on it then tap the buttons on your controller that you want to be the new buttons. Now if you ever download new games and you don't want to go through all that hassle and tussle, then simply click this 3 line button. Scroll down to scan for new games and it will automatically update your game folder. If they are in the same folder as your previous games, then click rescan all games to access them. Now this being an advanced PlayStation 2 emulator, it can be a major challenge, especially now that we have hundreds of phone models and dozens of processors. 
So here are a few tips for better experience. Number one, try changing the graphics renderer from OpenGL to Vulkan. Now this is because Vulkan delivers a very fast experience but not the best for all games. Number two, you can lower the resolution by simply choosing a lower upscale multiplier number. I prefer 4 to 5 which works well with my mid-range phone. Number three, you can try underclocking the emulated console CPU which can be done at the system option by choosing the EE cycle rate which will be changed to a negative number and the EE cycle skip to set to a positive number. Number four, you can also enable the multi-thread BU1 option which will give you a significant speed boost but requires at least three CPU cores. So if your phone has less than that, it will result in very slow speeds. Now the other three settings that are worth toggling for better performance include the GPU palette conversion, preload textures and disable hardware readbacks box options. Now with this set, you can play your favorite PlayStation 2 games to bring back your childhood memories. Now what are some of the downsides of this application? Well number one, there are no more updates since the developer quit after receiving death threats. And number two, you need a high-end phone for the best performance, but you can play some less demanding games on a budget device. Now despite all this, I think the Ether SX2 emulator is a major step forward for emulation on Android devices, and probably the best thing that has happened to Android gaming for a while now. Now if you enjoyed my video, please hit the like button. If you'd like more content on Lost Gaming from PC to Android, then hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell.